Toscana. In the kitchen now, Chef Ken Hall, and uh, he is a local chef who's been at many of the area restaurants and country clubs, and now he does his own thing, a private chef. He'll come cook for you, uh, cater for your party, uh, do whatever you need, cook for your family. That's the big thing now. The big trend is, mm -hmm. you know, you'll do a, a couple of meals a week so people don't have to go out to dinner but have a really nice dinner at home. Well, they're so busy. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing is mm -hmm. they are just so busy. They're running in and out all the time because the kids have a million different things going sure. on. So that's, that's the biggest draw for me in, in going in and cooking. And I can cook their old time favorites, or I can cook the, the meals that they would go out to dinner for, sure. either or, whichever fits the bill. But I always have to have something for the kids. Uh, and the thing is, I think it's a lot <laughs> less expensive than people think. By the time you go out to dinner, you know. Uh, I'm cheaper than going out to dinner for a family. And it can be healthy, too. And, and you're sitting mm -hmm. in your own house. You don't have to wait for a table, all that kind of stuff. So, right. you know, it's, it can be really special. So um, might be something to think about, that people who do it swear by it. Uh, right. And uh, um, very, very cool. Uh, all right. We're going to tackle, today's show is about the basics. So um, I love to learn from my chef friends. Mm -hmm. I'm not a chef. I'm just a cooking mom. Um, and we're talking about a chicken, picking up a whole chicken, which I love they, they are great, especially when they go on sale. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't want to roast it whole, how do you deal with it? What do you do with it? So we just took this out of the package. What would you, your home, you're sitting at home in your kitchen, what would you do with it? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to the sink and I'm going to rinse it off. And that is really important. Don't really skip important. that Really important. Don't step. skip the rinsing it off. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Any kind of chicken? Because I do that with every type of chicken. I always do it with every type of chicken okay. I buy. Good. Good to know. Just because in the packaging, you just don't know where it's been. Mm-hmm. Even the boneless, skinless chicken breasts, um, unless they've been, you know, pre-marinated at the grocery store, but uh, otherwise I rinse those off as well. Well, and the only way that I that I don't is if I know where it's coming from, if I pick it up from the farmer or something like that. But typically, I'm going to bring the cutting board order over to you, and then we've got some paper towels, so we don't want to put it back on that plate because right. that already had the juices. So we're just going to kind of drip that off a mm -hmm. little bit, mm -hmm. and then once we get that back over there. We're going to take our paper towels. Pat it dry pat on it a nice dry. clean cutting board. We just washed this cutting board. Well, that's the biggest thing is you just don't want to cross contaminate, especially if you're going to be cooking food. You want to make sure your cutting board is clean mm -hmm. and you get mm -hmm. all the juices. Mm -hmm. So there we've got our chicken breast. All right, now. Now, depending on what you're going to do with the chicken breast, um, Sometimes the wings will be folded back behind like this. So mm -hmm. the first thing I do is I unfold the wings so I can see them. Okay. Now you'll notice right through here there's a little white area and that's right where the seam is. So actually the chicken gives you a road map to cut it up if you look for it. So you can see kind of the white line right through there and that's right where the seam is. So there are your two wings. Okay. Okay, then what you do here is you see the white seam here. Yes. So we're going to cut through that, and then right here is where the hip bone is. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to kind of open it up a little bit, and then just run your knife right along that hip bone. Now this is not looking like you're really having to tug and get in here. You can do this with a butter knife. Okay. Because the seam is there. You really don't have to cut through any meat. Um, the, the classic French chefs that I was trained with, they taught us how to do it with a butter knife. Really? So you I mean, really it, don't need, honest to goodness, you really don't need a sharp, sharp butcher knife unless you're cutting through the bone. Okay. But, I mean, obviously we're t not telling you to go do it with a butter knife, but you don't need some super duper fancy knife. Is what right. I'm because okay. now what you do is you just come right down. So here is your joint. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is just kind of pop that joint. Another way to do that is to grab it and pop it backwards. Okay. Then I hold it right here and then I just go into that little cookie. That's the first thing that everybody nibbles off of when you roast the chicken, you know, because it's always breast side down and everybody picks that. It's called the oyster. Okay. Everybody picks that out. So what I like to do is, again, we'll come down this other side here and you can just kind of see right where that hip is and you just take it right down to the cutting board like this. And then right here is where the joint is. So the easiest way to do it is just grab the chicken and push underneath right here and that pops that right out. And then you come down and you just pull that oyster right out. Now, I, for people who are at home going, he's making it look so easy. You do offer cooking classes every now and again, or you, even in your house, you'll come to home and do cooking classes. Right. Invite the ladies over if you really want to learn how to do it. Because I think some of this stuff, it's really better to do hands on, you know? Exactly, and and that is becoming more and more popular as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
different groups getting together, say it's a bunco group or a reading group or whatever, the wine group, mm -hmm. they want something different every once in a sure, blue moon. Sure. And so cooking right now is something that everybody enjoys yes. doing. Um, I did one that was a farmer's market. We went to the farmer's market with no menu in mind and we looked through the farmer's market and they picked what they liked and we took it back to the apartment and we made a five course meal. Fun. So it was a lot of fun. All okay. right, so we're running out of time here. So we've got the breast still to deal with. Okay, so you can feel right where the breastbone mm -hmm. is and you can kind of see that there's a discoloration here. What you want to do is you just want to follow right down the breastbone here and then the wishbone is right in this corner. So you can see right where that wishbone is that wishbone takes you right to the joint. So your joint is right here. So what I like to do is I like to come right down the rib bone so that we get the bottom of the breast off. And the same thing for the other breast? Right, and now you can see right where that joint is. I'm gonna let Ken keep going and now he's gonna show us in this, uh, a little later in the show what to do with this now that we've got it all boned and, and ready to cook. He's got some fun ideas, so stick with us, we'll be back.